Hey guys, welcome to another edition of Solve My Math Homework Video Solutions. So today we have a word problem that involves parabolas. It's in the conic section of a pre-calculus course. Okay, so let's get started. During the Philadelphia Phillies baseball games, the team's mascot, the Fanatic, launches hot dogs into the stands. The launching device propels the hot dogs into the air at an initial velocity of 64 feet per second. A hot dog's distance, y, above the ground after x seconds can be modeled by the equation y equals negative 16x squared plus 64x plus 6. All right, and then it wants us to write that equation in standard form, and, and then it asks, what's the maximum height a hot dog can reach? Okay, guys, this is a word problem that does not need to be a word problem. All you need to know is that this is an equation, it's a quadratic, that we're gonna put into standard form, and then it always asks, okay, one of the most popular things to ask for from a parabola is going to be the maximum or the minimum height, and when you see this, they are just asking you for the vertex. That's it. So we can literally get rid of everything but the equation. But first, let's go over some stuff we need to know. All right, standard form for a quadratic that opens up or down. It's gonna be x minus h squared equals 4py minus k. hk is the vertex. Remember, it's opposite sign. So if you had x minus two, that would mean the vertex, the x coordinate of the vertex is at positive two. Okay, so x minus h is really negative h, so the negative value for that h. p is the distance from the vertex to the focus. It's also the distance to the directrix. So let me draw you a little picture of what I'm talking about here. Okay, if we have a parabola and it opens down and here's our vertex, here is our focus, right? Here's our vertex. Then we have something that's equidistant, so the same distance here would be here, although it doesn't look like it because... I kind of estimated it. So the directrix is that line that's not actually included in the graphs, directrix, okay? So this here is P. That's the P value, okay? And that doesn't really look like a P, but you know what I'm saying. Okay, so this is all we need. We need to put this thing in standard form and then find the vertex. And by the way, the vertex, we need the Y coordinate for the vertex. So we need the K. Okay, this is going to be the height of the vertex. Okay, so this word problem, you almost can ignore all the words as long as you know that maximum height is asking you for the vertex. So let's get a clean piece of paper and let's get started. Okay, so let's just put what they gave us. They gave us the equation. We don't wanna bring that whole word problem back because we, we really don't need it. So we got y equals negative 16x squared plus 64x plus 6, all right? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to complete the square to solve this thing, all right? So let's move this out of the way, and let's complete the square. Okay, completing the square. You can't have anything in front of that x squared term. So our first step is going to simply be, and let's see if I can write these down in a way that's not too messy. Um, let's say we're gonna, number one, we're going to factor a, so the number that's in front of the x squared from the x squared and x term alone. Okay, so let's do that. So we still have the y equals, so we have y equals, this is our a term, so negative 16 comes out. Okay, we have x squared left. Now we have, oh, we have a negative, okay, we divide it by a negative, so we're gonna take out that positive 64 divided by negative 16 is going to be negative 4x. And then we're gonna leave a little space for that something to be named later when we go ahead and complete the square. But don't forget, don't lose your six. Okay, so now let's complete the square. So y equals negative 16. Let's remember what we're doing. We need a new c term. We have something that's not a perfect square trinomial. We wanna make it a perfect square trinomial. So this guy you get from taking b divided by two and squaring, and I have a video on this talking about why, if you look for my completing the square video. All right, so let's say x squared stays the same, minus stays the same, four x stays the same, half of four is two, and I know it's a negative four, but we're going to square it, so you literally don't have to worry about the sign for this one time. So half of four is two, two squared is what we're gonna add, so add two squared. Now we don't wanna change the value, so we need to subtract two squared right away and then keep our plus six. And I know you're thinking, what in the world, why did I just do this? So let's clean it up a little and let's talk about that. 
Okay, so we're gonna get equals, we got a negative 16, x squared minus four x plus four. And this is gonna be a minus four, but look, it's really not just a minus four because we have this negative 16 that's getting distributed to everything in here. So I wanna take this out, I wanna put it on the outside, but it's not simply negative four. It's going to be, right, let's close this up. We're gonna have our plus six and we are going to have plus negative four times negative 16 so plus 64, okay? So I basically said I'm gonna add four and subtract four, but I'm moving the subtracted four outside of the parentheses. And to do that, I have to remember to distribute it, okay? This is not simply, this isn't an, a four here either. This will have a negative 16 multiplied to it because that's what distributive property says, okay? So let's do a little bit more cleanup here. So we have a negative 16, we have x squared minus four x, plus four plus 70, okay? So now the next thing we wanna do, we wanna factor. So we're going to factor this so that it looks like that x minus h squared that we need so badly, okay? So let's do that. Negative 16, when we factor this, it is now a perfect square trinomial. Factors of positive four that add up to negative four, x minus two, squared, okay, x squared just breaks up into x and x, but we're writing it as the square of a binomial. All right, so we that have that, we still have our plus 70. Now I'm going to move my equals y to the other side. I know that I lost it. I also know that my standard form, remember our standard form says x minus h squared equals 4py minus k, okay? So that's why I moved my y over there. I know I want everything over there anyway. All right, so let's clean this up. So negative 16, x minus two squared plus 70. Let's move over that 70, okay? Actually, let me get rid of this for you. Just reminding you of that formula. So minus 70, minus 70. So negative 16, x minus two squared equals y minus 70, okay? Let's do one more thing. Let's get rid of, we don't have x minus two squared isolated yet, so let's divide by negative 16, divide by negative 16. I know this is getting messy, but we're gonna clean it up. X minus two squared equals, and now I have this negative 16 in the denominator. I'm just going to write it as a fraction. Okay, so there we go. So that gives us our standard form. X minus two squared equals negative 1 16th times the quantity y minus 70. That makes our hk, it makes our vertex, which is hk, is, remember, opposite signs, 270. So the height, the maximum height, maximum height for this hot dog that this fanatic is throwing is 70 feet. I don't think anybody's gonna eat the hot dog that he threw when it was 70 feet in the air, but maybe, I mean, if you catch it and it didn't touch the ground, I suppose this is fine. Anyway, here's your answer. Standard form, 70 feet is how high this thing throws hot dogs. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, pop them in the comments. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so I can do your ridiculous problem next. Thanks.